back here at historic Crocker Field in Fitchburg, getting ready for game number two of our triple header of action here tonight in girls flag football. We have the Red Raiders of Fitchburg High School taking on the Griffins of Greater Lowell Technical High School. Daniel Bolak here with you, happy to have you along with us. Game number one, Fitchburg fell 13-0 to the Blue Devils of Lemonster. Lemonster now a perfect 5-0 on the campaign. That one was a close game, just like last week's game against Lemonster 2, tied at halftime. But it was Lemonster who broke through for the first strike, and they were able to get an insurance marker late. See Greater Lowell in the dark blue uniforms with the fluorescent yellow numbers. Meanwhile, Fitchburg will continue on in the red uniforms. The dark red crimson shade with the white numbers. Coin toss has been had. The teams take to the field now. You will see in this contest, Fitchburg will be going from the far side to the near in the first half, while Greater Lowell will be going from the near side to the far. Greater Lowell 2-2 two and two on the campaign, wins over Veritas Prep, and a bit of a surprising win over Ayer Shirley last week. We'll be seeing Ayer Shirley in our third game later tonight. Spotted right on the five yard line. We are ready to go. First down, Genexis Santiago, the quarterback for the Raiders. Deep throw down, Fields going to be batted down and incomplete. Mia Fanuf able to bat that away. She is a junior. Actually, let me try that again. She is a freshman. Graduating classes on the roster for Greater Lowell. And looking at it down their roster, not a single senior to be had. Everyone class of 25 to 27. This is the year 2024, which means we have no seniors for this Greater Lowell team. Second down, bit of pressure on the throw to Falaska. Goes over her head and incomplete. Lily Normandy was there with the coverage for the, the, for the Griffins. Third down coming for the Red Raiders. A throw over the middle, but Sabi is not able to get there quickly enough. And three and out it goes. Three passes falling right to the turf. Therefore, the Raiders really having trouble getting anything going on that drive. It's good pressure there. We are joined again by Jack Reed. Central Mass League Commissioner. Thank you very much for joining us. And we were talking a little bit. It was a bit of a surprise. Greater Lowell coming away with that victory in that close fought game against Ayer Shirley last week. First down. A lot of stuff going on there. Interesting. Second down, throw to the right side is going to be caught and not able to grab the flag of Amani Nagigi. She's able to get a tremendous run downfield. Didn't take very long to find a score there. Already first down. For Greater Lowell. Jaylene Tatro is the quarterback for the Griffins. She'll roll to her left. Throw down field. We tipped it incomplete. Out of the hands of Peyton LeMag.
Wow. And looking down this roster, too, everyone's class of 25, 6, or 7. I don't see any seniors on this roster. The throw to the left side is going to be caught, taken in by Alexi Peralta. down coming for Greater Lowell. Already in the Raider territory. Tatro trying to throw to the right side. We tipped incomplete. Juan and Peralta went off her fingertips and two different Raiders in the vicinity to shut that one down. As it goes, Raiders will have the ball back. Raiders had three incompletions on their first possession. A bit of trouble solving the greater Lowell defense. They'll go with a run on first down. Reynosa trying to get to her left side boundary. She's still on her feet, making her way close to midfield. A good run by Reynosa. I guess if the air's not working, try it on the ground. And one run got quite a lot of yardage. They are just short of midfield. So second down, about a yard to go. We'll need to go to the air for or this play in the mandatory no-run zone. Must throw the pass, and they'll find Falaska. Kept a hold of that one, nearly dropped it, but just kept it in her grasp and was able to get a good run there. That'll be a first down for the Raiders. Shut up the last couple of games. Hand off to Santiago. Ends up stepping close to the boundary. Oh, gave the touchdown. It was a bit of miscommunication there. We're not really sure what they were going to give the call on that one, but they've given the touchdown. She looked into me. Walking the tightrope there. Looks like she stayed in. With that rough. I mean, he was staring right at it. I thought he called her out, but then he didn't argue with the other, the other one. Oh, no. Yep, they called her out. The, far, the official on the other side had the touchdown, but the one on the near side had her going out. So, won't be a touchdown. Instead, will be a shovel pass to Velasca. She reaches over the goal line. I think we can be pretty sure this time, right? Yeah. Yeah, and those centers are deadly down there at the goal line. Velasco just took a couple steps, turned around, he passed it to her, she reached the ball over the goal line. She's a veteran player, she was on the team last year, did a really good job last year, she's having a really good season so far this year. Raiders had a bit of a scoreless drop, but they finally broke it up. 6-0 throw to Sanchez. She's inside that goal line for the conversion. 7 0 to the Raiders. Sanchez has great hands. She, she goes up and gets this one, but that first game against Lemister, she had a couple nice catches. She's really been a reliable receiver the first couple weeks. Indeed, and now Raider Lowell will have their second possession. They were able to get a first down their last time up. A solid squad, 2 and 2 on the campaign. Jillian Tatro, the quarterback, first down, throws left side, tries to find the center, and Gian Santana. Freshman not able to come away with that catch. Hey, hey, Having a look at the replay, throw left side, maybe just a little rushed there. I think there was some pressure by the Raiders. That throw just not in the right spot for Santana to come up with that catch. 
trying to find their own success in going to the center there. Second down for the Griffins. Tatra wants to go deep, but Santiago's got the best look of all, and she's got the ball on the interception. Yeah, Greater Little Tech was looking for number six, Lexi. I believe she's a freshman. Coach said that she's one of their top players. Yeah, they were looking for Peralta, I believe, and Lexi Peralta, yeah. Yeah, the problem there was uh, just where that ball was going, wildly thrown up in the air, and Santiago had a great line and a great look at that, and she had the best look of all, and she was able to come away with the catch. Yeah, if you put it in her, her area, she's going to go get it. First down for the Raiders, and try to go throw to the center, this time to Kia Davis. Kia Davis, another returner from last year. Seeing her for the first time today. She takes Velasquez's spot in the center roll there. Just not able to come away with that catch. Second down for the Raiders. Three receivers all split on one side. Looks for the cut across there. And that's Zymeri Rodriguez who gets in there for a touchdown. She reached for it. That was a great play. Another returner from last season. That was a veteran move there to get near the goal line. Good catch. Raider Lowell continues to not rush. Miss flag, she reaches. That was a good play by Fitchburg. Greater Lowell Tech might want to implement a rush here. It doesn't look like they're rushing on this play either. Raiders will go for one again. And plenty of time there, and Zamari Rodriguez will pull that one in for the conversion. Make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, seven seconds, just a lot of time to give a good quarterback. You know, Gia's got good vision. Um, you know, they're just giving her a little too much time to throw the ball. Might be 4v5 in terms of receivers downfield, in terms of your coverage. You might be outnumbering them, but you can't underestimate giving that quarterback all that time in the pocket. Yeah, yeah, they're going to find some, some players open. Hard to cover for seven seconds in any form of football. Absolutely. Greer Lowell will take back to the field for their third drive of contest. Now trailing 14 to nothing. First down. A dropped handoff. That'll put the ball all the way back there. Yeah, a bit of a fumble snap there. That, that's a killer on first down. Lose yardage, backed up against their own goal line. Maybe a bit of jitters there. Trying to get that quick handoff to Lexi Peralta. But she had trouble corralling it. Second that Tatro. Trying to get that quick throw back over. Tipped and caught by Peralta. Wanted to find Gianna Santana instead, but it goes off of her hands and into the hands of Lexi Peralta. The Griffins will take that at the very least. Gets them some yardage, gives them a little less that they have to get to to get to midfield here on third down. Yeah, a little bit of luck on that play, but they needed it after the first down. It's a big third down coming up, trailing 14-0. Very close to the center as Tatra rolls right, throws out of the reach and incomplete wanted Kendra O'Brien. Yeah, Fitcher might have got a little away with a little contact on the defense on this one. Looked like she was going to come open. Well, maybe not. The Annalis Pena had the coverage there for the Raiders, number 17. Raiders did add a few players to their roster since last week. I had to hand write them into my roster because I didn't expect them to make them cha make some changes. Yeah, teams have until next Tuesday. That's the roster deadline. Uh, next Tuesday to add players. Just give them a little bit of time to let players decide if they want to make any changes. Got to change at quarterback here. Yep. So I have uh, Genevieve Raboyne as the quarterback, number 16. Last week, a different number 16 at quarterback, and there's the dump off to Nakia. <laughs> Davis is able to get a good run out to the our left side, her right side, and get some good yards there. Well, it looks like Raider Little Tech has changed their defense a little bit. They've they've added the rusher, Pro trying to put a little pressure on the quarterback. So I know last week we had Nalago Rivera wearing number 16. 
this week, according to the roster that I've got from Todd Robbins, it looks like Gene Genevieve Ravoin is now playing in that role. The pass there, looking for Gia Santiago. At that time, just off her fingertips. The Raiders probably feeling, you know, when they've got all their cylinders rolling, that they're in pretty good shape. They want to get more players in there. They want to try to change up the personnel, get a lot of participation in. Yeah, Pittsburgh has a big roster in, in that first game <clears throat> against Lemus, it was tight the whole game. It's harder to, to get everybody in in that situation. So with a 14-0 lead, it looks like they're getting some other players in. Here's an RPO to Gia. But she'll roll out to the far side, just try to improvise, but there wasn't a whole lot open downfield. And good pressure there by Nassiani Deval. Really pressuring Santiago, not giving her the option to just be, just step up in the pocket and be comfortable. Yeah, Greater Little Tech had that one covered. A few players there. So yeah, we're late in the first half of play, 14-0 to the Red Raiders. Yeah, Greater Little Tech's gonna get something on offense going down 14, a couple minutes left in the first half. Their first drive, they made some good progress. They made it into Raider territory, but it petered out there. Since then, they've had a lot more difficulty in making their way downfield. Tatra on first down, a lot of pressure. Doesn't get her flag pulled, gets the pass off, and, well, things happened, I imagine. Well, it looks like they, I think that they called for maybe seven seconds on the quarterback. So the quarterback has seven seconds to throw the ball. The rest blew the play dead before the interception, so it's going to stay greater than a little tech ball. But potentially, I'm not sure what that was. It was a penalty on the defense, so it's going to remain first down. Things get confusing sometimes. I know I was looking downfield, so I didn't get to see whatever the infraction was on this down. I saw the, the ref was signaling flag guarding, but that would be an offensive play, penalty, not a defensive. So, not sure what that was. Maybe an impeding the rusher, potentially contact on the quarterback. Well, on that play, they snapped it to Peralta. She gives it to Tatro. Tatro gives it back to Peralta. Get some distance on that one. They've got the down marker now at second down. The throw to the left side. It's caught by Peralta, and she gains a few yards. That's her playmaker. That's who they want to get the ball to. See it two times in a row there, two plays in a row. But Fitchburg had that one covered pretty well. Sean Marie Rodriguez with the flag pole. Air Shirley may be on their way to another touchdown. Meanwhile, Tatra goes for the deep ball, nearly picked by GX and Santiago. Yeah, she had that one in her hands, just couldn't hang on to it. It's going to be fourth down here for Gray Little Tech. Looks like they're pumping. Playing it safe here before the half. Yeah, we'll see air next. Um, they're fast, they're athletic. They should give Lemonster a, a good game here in the next next game slot. Absolutely, three and one. Their only loss coming to this greater Lowell side. And that was a 7-6 one. Came down to a conversion. Yeah, I was talking to the coach earlier today and he said that uh, Greater Lowell Tech scored on the first drive or first first play of the game. They weren't ready. They got the extra point, so they were down 7 nothing right away and had a few touchdowns called back for penalty. But they couldn't overcome that early 7 nothing deficit. Ooh, and there's an interception by the Griffins. I think that's Kiana Pack who was able to come up with that. Great, great interception there. Great play right before the half, too. They get the ball back. I think. Her deep ball on first down went back to Santiago at quarterback. Yeah, if they can punch it in here, we're going to have a one-score game at halftime. Could be a big momentum swing for the Griffins. Canna Pack, a freshman safety. Able to come away with that football. Lowell's only about 15 yards to go to get a touchdown. And they've got one right there. Kendra O'Brien pulls that one in to put the Griffins on the board. Brian was just a little too tall there. That was a great throw by the quarterback. She put it in a perfect spot. 
Ryan just went up and got it. And Gio's just out of the reach of Gio's hands. Yeah, nice catch. Huge play. That's just what Greater Lowell needed. They've been spinning their wheels the last couple of drives. Took advantage of the interception. Now go for the conversion, trying to make it a seven point game. Pulls it out and Peralta pull that win in. She does. Another great play. Great athleticism by Greater Lowell. The trade school from the Northeast. Yeah, you gotta make plays. You know, Greater Lowell Texas made two in a row there. Cut the lead in half, 14-7. Can't be a lot of time left before before halftime. Griffin's letting the Raiders know it's not going to be that easy. Raiders will throw. That one's going to be caught by Saudi Reynoso. And she gets her flag pulled out there. Nice diving play. Jayla Velez was able to grab that flag. Prevent Reynoso from getting a huge gain downfield. Do you know what a Griffin is? It's a mythical bird. I was flies. trying to figure out what that. Yeah. It flies. That's 25 hit points in Heroes 3. Second down for the Raiders. Deep go, pass. Go for that deep ball downfield. Goes through the hands of Kiana Pack. Looking for either Reynoso or Andrea Silva. Not able to come away with it. Pittsburgh's hurrying up here, trying to get another playoff before the half. Thought she had her, just a little underthrown on that last play. Looks like it's halftime. Looks like they ran out of time then. So halftime here, 14 for the Red Raiders. Uh, did it look like that conversion play was that from five or ten yards out? I was just, I was, I was just looking at that. I thought it was from. Uh, I thought it was from the five it was the first, but I'm going to try to get clarification on that. Yeah, I thought it was from the five as well. Our uh, our folks in the back put eight on the board, so they think that was from ten out. But uh, we'll get that straightened away. Needless to say, Fitchburg does have a one-score lead at the half in our second game of action here from field number one. This time the field going in from the west side here on the press box to the east side of the field towards the Nashua River. For the time being, we'll switch back to seven and we'll uh, run with that until we hear otherwise. Raiders had well, a bit of inconsistency, you could say, on the drives. A couple of drives where things were going tremendously for the Raiders and then a couple of drives where things went poorly. They had the opening drive in which they went three and out. They had the drive that ended in an interception which led to Greater Lowell bouncing back with a couple of scores and good to see some folks out here tonight taking in the flag football. The second week of flag football here at Crocker Field and the third week overall here in Central Mass. Yeah, Fitchburg had the momentum there early in that game, early in the first half and in Greater Little Tech just was able to make a few plays there at the end, get a stop. Do you know who, who started the game with the ball? I was making my way up here. Yeah, it was Fitchburg who started with the ball, so Greater Lowell will have it to start the second half. And they'll be coming right at us from the far side to the near. Fitchburg will be going away from us from the near to the far. Well, we have a moment too, Jack. We can talk a little bit about the format of this season. So we know a couple games a week, and how long is this season going to be going on for? So there's going to be eight weeks of the regular season, um, and then week nine is going to be a conference championship, a single elimination conference championship. So all the teams in Central Mass will get together. Um, seedings will be based on their regular season standings. And then the top four teams from the conference championship will qualify for the state championship at Gillette Stadium. And that's the same on, in the eastern side. Um, so it's a knockout tournament and then the four semifinalists, they'll play on for a Central Mass Championship, but the four semifinalists will be the teams that will be making their way to Gillette. Correct. We have some issues with this first play from scrimmage in this second half of play. Coaches out there as well, looks like. All 
Hawks a penalty of some sort. Didn't get a good look at what happened, but I can tell you that that ball got backed up, so where Lowell was to blame. That throw looking for, well, it looked like they were looking for Santiago on Peyton LeMay, but Santiago with the pass defense. I did get confirmation it is 14-7. All right. So we've got that squared away. Yeah, Santiago with another, almost another interception there. They're kind of playing him with fire by, by testing her. Santiago already has an interception tonight. She's one of those strong pass defenders for the Raiders. Patro with the throw into a bunch of different players. I think there was some contact there as well. So a couple of Griffins are a bit worse for wear. Yeah, she might have got away with a little contact here. Doesn't look like there's any penalties on the play. But she comes in. Sometimes, hit her in the back of the head there. Yeah, sometimes players just come together as they're all going for the same goal, just looking for that ball there. Yeah, it's a non-contact sport, um, but there's some contact. Yeah, that's the thing. We try to minimize the contact. I mean, when they say non-contact sport, they mean there's not supposed to be contact. Yeah, the refs will let some things like that, you know, in the course of the play go. That was third down for Greater Lowell. They had the penalty on first down. That lost them that down. And then the two plays that didn't go quite to plan gives the Raiders the ball back. They'll have it on their five-yard line after the Greater Lowell punt. They also will line up to the left of Gia Santiago. Well, to the right, hand it off to Reynoso. She'll try to cut to the left side. The third effort to pull the flag is the one that will stop Reynoso's run. The ink there from Kiana Pack. Yeah, that was a really nice hit move here. By Reynoso makes a couple girls miss. A little jump cut. It's quite an impressive, it's quite a, a uh, courageous move to cut between two defenders like that. It's the third one that ends up pulling the flag off. Yeah. Hooked up off pass there to Falaska. She dives out to the right side, past the 20 yard line. I don't think she was quite to midfield there. I'll bring up third down. Now it looks like they're gonna be just outside the no run zone too. So I think they have the option to run or pass here. Pretty close to the 20. Double reverse. A double reverse and beautiful Sanchez trying to make that cut move successful, but that time it's the diving reach and the yank from Rogela Velez that got her short of midfield. So I would expect Fitchburg to go for it here within the no run zone. Seven point lead, fourth and about three. So they'll go for it on fourth down. They know it's got to be a pass. It'll be the dump off to Falaska. That's a tried and true play that will get you a few yards, and that's the few yards they need to get the first down. Yeah, Falaska's their reliable center. Um, she has a few catches this game, a couple catches last game. I would expect on, on those short plays, you know, the defense has to account for the center. First down. Oh, wide open. Oh, yeah, wide open there was Falaska. That pass just in front of her. And reaching out as far as she could, could not pull it in. I really needed Falaska to catch that ball there to make all the nice things I just said about her too. <laughs> she'll come back, she'll have another catch. I believe in her. Bring up second down for the Raiders. About 22 yards from goal. A deep ball, and that goes through the hands of Reynoso. Pittsburgh has, some, has receivers running wide open down the middle of the field. It looks like Greater Lowell Tech is playing cover two. And so they're leaving that deep middle open a little bit and just can't connect here. About five minutes elapsed in this first, the second half of play, in the second game of our triple header. 14-7, Red Raiders in front. 
Santiago's going to take all seven seconds there. Go with the deep ball. Yeah. That one a little harder for Reno, so let's get a hand on it, but nothing more than that. Yeah, so no rush again there. They gave her some time. This is actually a really nice throw. Just looks like... Let's see here. Yeah, just a little outside of reach. Just a little overthrown. Got it in the area. Put it in the area code, but not in the right city. Pittsburgh not ready there on defense. Um, Coach Aquindo has to call timeout. It looks like maybe some flag difficulties there for Gia Santiago. She's going to get her belt back in order. Also, great roll over for the second time in this second half. Kaylee Tatro, the quarterback. Hand it off, Lexi Peralta. Nice cut. Some nice cuts, some nice moves. In trouble getting that flag out. Took, I think, the third effort for Reynosa before it finally came off the belt. But by that point, Peralta able to get to midfield. I thought she got away with a little bit of flag guarding here at the end of the play. Yeah, a little bit. But. It was behind the ref. Sometimes it's hard for the refs with the angle that the players are running at. It looks like we have two officials on this game. I think we had three last week on this field. I think we've only been running with a two official crew in this contest. Yeah, this week all the games are going to have two officials. And how can a person get involved in flag football officiating? Uh, that's a great question. Um, go to nflflag.com. There is a officiating uh, certification course. If you take that course, you'll be entered into a database. So when leagues like ours are looking for officials, um, you know they'll be referred to us. But we're really lacking officials in, in Central Massachusetts. A lot of these officials are coming from Eastern Mass to travel here every week to officiate these games. That's good to know. I think we always want to, we know that f officiating is down, official numbers are down uh, in pretty much every sport, not just here in flag football, which is, you know, I know this is a newer organization, but flag football has obviously existed for many years. Yeah, yeah, there's a, a lot of, of flag officials, but leagues use different officials. For example, our, the Lemonster Flag Football League, the Youth League in Lemonster uses high school kids, boys and girls, and, but for this, you know, high school league, we needed some adult officials, so it's really hard, we don't have a lot of officials here in Central Massachusetts, as I mentioned, these guys are coming from Eastern Mass, but as we grow, as the program grows, that's something that we're going to really try to develop uh, for next year, is to, is to develop officials in Central Mass, so if anybody's listening, you want to become an official, visit nflflag.com, take that officiating course and you'll get referred to us when we are looking in the future. All right. Well, that last play, Peyton LeMay was the intended receiver, but two different Raiders with the coverage. Tom Marie Rodriguez and Bianalis Pena had the coverage. Vetted that from going anywhere. This is third down for Greater Lowell. They're right at midfield. to play here on third down. Tatro with a quick throw to the left side. Gigi makes the catch, but her flag immediately ganked out by Pena. Yeah, like I mentioned in the first game, there's not a lot of good plays in the playbook for third and 25. And sometimes, as you saw in the first game, when Fitchburg threw it deep on third down, Lemonster intercepted it, returned it. So it looked like Greater Lowell on that play just opted for the short pass, maybe try to have her uh, you know, make a couple people miss, run to the end zone. But it didn't work that time. Iggy had a great catch and run earlier in the contest. Kia Davis is able to make the catch on first down. Her flag ganked out by Jayla Velez. Get to about the 15 yard line. Yeah, it looked like she had some room up the middle there. She chose to take it to the sideline. That's one of the things in flag football. You want to run north-south 
not East West. No different than, than tackle football. Second down for the Raiders, Santiago. Taking all seven seconds, gonna go for that deep ball. That's thrown to the floor and incomplete. Dropped intercepted it. Interception there. Yeah, that was Jayla Velez again. And breaking that one up. And although she's not able to come away with the pick, she is still able to break it up. So she's got it in her hands and throwing it to the ground. It means that no Raiders got it in their hands and making damage happen. Yeah, it looked like Beautiful might have had uh, something to say about that interception too. I think she turned into a defender. Reynoso looks to take the snap with Gia Santiago to her left. On third down, Santiago will have it, and she can run with it if she feels comfortable doing so. She'll run out to the left side, runs out of room, and two defenders able to shut her down. Yeah, too far there for Fitchburg to, to risk it in a one-score game. They're going to punt. Raynoso will have it on their own five-yard line. We're past the halfway point in this second half of play. 14-7 Fitchburg in front. They scored on their second and third drives of the contest. Greater Lowell took advantage of a short field and made some very nifty plays. Yeah, I was just going to say that Greater Lowell has not gone the length of the field yet this, this game to score that their one touchdown was on a short field after an interception. So see if they can go the length on this drive. Throw out to the right side is complete. That's their right side. Our left, catch made by Gianna Santana. That was a really nice first down play. Throws it out far side. And a good catch and run. Just a lot of room to run, Pena. Not able to get her flag, ended up being Silva, who was able to yank it out. Second and short for the Griffins. Another throw to the right side. That'll work yet again. This time, Santiago able to snare the flag of Santana, but not before she was able to get across midfield for a fresh set of downs. Looked like she was even uh, fumbling the ball a little bit as she was coming up with it. Had a little bit of trouble controlling it, but nevertheless, she corralled it. Gets the first down for the Griffins. Trying to make another statement here at Crocker Field. Upset Ayer Shirley last week. Trying to find another one. Tatro's throw knocked away by Santiago. Nice defensive play there by Gia. And Greater Little Tech is off schedule a little bit here. With that first down and completion. And of course, when you get into enemy territory, the fact you only get three shots at scoring, too just makes it all the more critical to make sure you're getting yards with each passing play. Yeah, that can be difficult. Easier said than done. Second down for Greater Lowell. Tatro to her right, gets the throw off. Wants to find Peralta, found her. I had to fight off the defender and ultimately didn't get much yardage on that. I'm sorry, who was that for Fitchburg? That was Shamari Rodriguez who made the tackle, if you will. Yeah, Shamari's been a, really a defensive standout for them over the last two seasons. I was really impressed with uh, watching them week one again last week as well. She's just get a lot, a lot of flag pulls, very aggressive on the passes. Tatro on the handoff, throws downfield, fought off and incomplete. Looking for Kendra O'Brien. Ryan scored their first touchdown, or their touchdown in the first half. They went up to her again here, almost had her. And Gia comes in and makes a nice pass breakup. Just good coverage there. We said Gia next to Santiago's name so many times. But the Raiders, you know, they didn't have her last week, but you can see what she can do and the impact that she has. Velasca with the catch, and she's still going past midfield. Gia Velasca. Going to make a run all the way for a provisional touchdown. Velasca making my prediction come true, but this is coming back on the flag. 
Able to run all the way for good measure for 45 yards, but a flag coming down behind the play. And everybody running back, they all know this one's not going to stand. It looked pretty clean to me watching it live. I'd love to see this replay, see if she did get her hand in there. But it's a big drive for Fitchburg. They can score here, they can kind of ice the game. They give it back to Gray or Little Tech. Gray or Little Tech will have a chance to, to score and tie it. Alaska is still able to keep some of those yards in the play, just not the 45. She can keep about well, five of them. Yeah, so it's five yards from the flag guard. So she had gained about 10 yards in the flag guard. So a lot of breath there, though. It's hard to run 40 yards and then come back, snap the ball, and catch the ball again. Uh, the challenge is... Now third down for the Raiders. This time they'll switch the centers, bring the Kia Davis back in. It'll be huge for the Raiders they can come away with the first down, holding on to this 14-7 lead. Santiago will throw, and that's Reynoso who's got the catch, and she's still going to the far side, and finally loses her footing and falls to the ground. Well, Fitchburg kind of had a free play there. There was an illegal rush on the defense. She left before the ball was snapped, but they were able to, able to complete the big play. It could be a dagger for a great little tech, depending on the time left in this game. So it was going to be a first down for the Raiders anyway, but Reynoso able to earn it through the catch, and they'll take the extra few yards for the penalty for good measure. This gives them another set of downs, three downs. Time's getting short here. Raiders would like some insurance. Santiago looking up in the pocket, wants to find Reynos, or cut again, or is that Sanchez? That's Sanchez. That is beautiful, Sanchez with a beautiful catch. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Yeah, Sanchez really has great hands. You put it near, she's gonna come down with it. They hadn't gone, gone to her very much in this, since that first half catch that she had. But that's a nice catch there in the end zone. She was right where she needed to be, and Santiago able to drop it right in the bucket. Huge insurance score for the Raiders. A quick dump off, tipped and intercepted. So now if she returns out there, it's worth two points. Mm -hmm. If you return an, uh, an extra point for, uh, for a score. Yep, the defensive deuce is a thing in flag football. Not a thing in high school football, in the high school tackle football, but it is a thing here. But ultimately, just looks like Davis wasn't really expecting that one. Bounced off her arm right into the hands of Peralta. Looks like it got her in the face. She held her face after that. Yeah, play. I think it went arm face and then yeah. Peralta's hands. Greater Lowell, not a whole lot of time to work with. That was a dagger of a touchdown to concede. And that's a dagger of an interception there by Pena. Yeah. Coach is calling for Coach Warner to look like he wanted a contact penalty on the quarterback. Doesn't look like he's going to get it. Right here. Trying to make something happen late. Yeah, she might have got all ball. But the rusher definitely affected that play. The rusher is one of the most important plays on, uh, players on the defense. They can, even if they're not getting sacks, they can really affect the quarterback's timing, the timing of all the routes. Um, they can affect throws like she did on that play. Trying to make the quarterback uncomfortable. In that case, Tatro not able to get the throw off that she wanted. Oh, you know what? It looks like they did give Greater Little Tech that, uh, that contact on the quarterback, so it's a penalty on Fitchburg. It's going to be a first down for Greater Little Tech. Because upon further consideration, the penalty was given. And a throw over to Peralta. Two cuts, three cuts, finally. Payne able to pull that flag down around the 18-yard line. Peralta just a freshman, so this, as we talked about earlier, this whole league is really skews a little bit, a little young. You know, there's a lot of really young talent, freshmen, sophomores in this league that, you know, in a couple years, they're going to develop into really good players. I counted eight freshmen for greater role. That's a catch there by Kendra O'Brien. She's able to run downfield, get some good yardage, get a first down. You know, he's... Griffins, they've only just been in their trades for a few months as someone who attended a trade school themselves. Yeah. 
They've only been in there. A lot of those freshmen, those class of 2027, they've only been in their shops for a few months, but they've already been making a big impact here on the gridiron. Well, these girls are exploring flag football. Don't they call it exploratory when you, as a freshman, yeah. you're... I know we had nine weeks at Monty Tech. Okay. Yeah, none of these girls have played flag football before. T speaking with the coach earlier, you know, they're all brand new, um, you know, playing the game for the first time. And, and I've been really impressed with them. They had a tough draw the first week. I think they played, oh, they played Fitchburg, right? They played Fitchburg and Lemister week one. Well, they had Veritas in week one, Fred Lowell did. Oh, okay. Yep. Sorry. I know. That's all right. So they you played have to, You have to juggle a lot of different things, but they did get Lemonster in each of the first two weeks, Lemonster 2 and Lemonster 1, right. and got shut out both times. We mentioned off the top that if you looked at the... Uh, if, if you looked at you know, the common opponents, Fitchburg played Lemonster better than Greater Lowell did. Both of them not, weren't able to get any points against the, either Blue Devil side. Yeah, but they've been, uh, you know, they, they had a tough schedule week one with with Lemister. Week two, they upset Air. You know, so they lost Lemister too, but they upset Air, who was a top four team in the state last year. And they're giving Fitchburg a game. You know, this is a talented Fitchburg team. Ooh. Nearly caught there up by O'Brien. Had two girls there. But this is a talented Fitchburg team. They're going to be one of the better teams. And, you know, great old tech. This was a one-score game until a few minutes ago. Imagine there can't be that much time left in this contest. 18 minutes minus the timeouts, minus the injury stoppage we had earlier. And we know there isn't too much time left. We just keep the clock running just because, again, we aren't 100% sure when the clock stops, when it starts. Yeah, and I believe Greater Little Tech had a, has a timeout there, so the clock... Yeah, so the stopped. actual official game clock stops. The clock on your screen doesn't, but it's sort of like... You, do you have any familiarity with Australian rules football? I've been to one game one yep. time when I was in Australia, but I don't have yep. any familiarity. Yep. So the thing is, whenever you watch a broadcast of an Australian rules football game, they have the official game clock wired into the on-screen scoreboard. Okay. So that starts from 20 minutes and counts down. But if you're in the venue itself, if you're at the stadium, they have a clock that starts at zero, just counts up, and does not stop for anything. Okay. So that's kind of the inspiration for why we do the count-up clock here. Interesting. Somebody, an uh, Aussie Rules fan in FATV. Is it you? you know, it's a little bit a little Aussie Rules, a little bit of uh, rugby. I, nice. I do like me some of those uh, non-traditional football sports. Well, we can add uh, we can add some injury time here <laughs> in uh, the Patriots Girls High School League. Injury time always uh, confused me in soccer. You know, you watch a soccer game, it goes up to 90 minutes, and then all of a sudden, six minutes are added onto the, the game. If it's just trying to make up for the stoppages, Greer Lowell had the completion there, not enough for the, for the touchdown. And now we're, we're still in the final moments here, and really it's just, you know, the injury time, the stoppage time is just to add on for, like, the players who got hurt, the fouls, and all the other things that they can't account for because at the end of the day, it's the official who's keeping time on the field. They're starting and stopping their watch. But the people who are watching on television, the people in the production truck, they don't know when the official starts and stops their watch. And so they're just making the best guesses they can. Yeah, they'll stop for timeouts. They'll stop for injury. Um, they'll stop to, you know, when they get together to, to discuss certain calls, they'll stop the clock on those times so it really is difficult yeah. second down deep ball downfield incomplete it noted that because I think Greater Lowell's got another game coming up against Collegiate Charter they can't start that game because they're still occupied it's third down but we have whistles And that's the whistle for full time in game number two of our triple header here at field number one. Fitchburg will take a 20 to seven win over Greater Lowell. They had to fight hard for this one. Greater Lowell is trying to make a statement to everyone to show that they are a solid first year squad. Yeah, we said at the beginning of the broadcast, they have a really good coaching staff. They're all related. There's a father, daughter, there's a husband, wife, I think there's a cousin. I'm not 100% sure what the family tree is there, but it, um, 
but yeah, you know, they, they have a really good coaching staff. I could tell week one that they're a very well coached team. Yeah, we'll shout out them, Randy Briere, the head coach, Kayla and Greg Valamoti, and Carly Caliver. Calavrachinos, I'm trying very hard on that name. That is, uh, I'll admit, that's a last name I've never seen before. My apologies for all of the butchering. Want to give that one a shot? Calabin, oh, there's an R in there. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Calavrachinos. Uh, is that Greek? I have no idea. But nevertheless, though, Greer Lowell, a well-coached team that performed quite well tonight and gave the Raiders a game. Pittsburgh still able to come away with a 20 to 7 victory. You know, the Raiders are, are well coached too. You know, I think Anthony Equendo, I mentioned in, in the game one, Anthony, you know, has played for a long time. He, uh, you know, he's coached in, in our league before with the youth. He's just really great football mind. Um, I think he's a future star in, the, in, in flag football coaching. Um, he's done a great job with this Raiders team. And they're going to continue to get better. You know, you saw it in the, in the first game tonight. They had a great game plan against Lemister. They, they were able to keep it close. They just, you know, couldn't make a few of those plays when they needed to, um, to, to put some points on the board. But to hold the Lemister offense to, what was it, 13 points in the first game, you know, that's they had a really good game plan tonight. And then this game, um, they came out really, really good in the first half. They were up 14 nothing, But, you know, flag football is really a mental game. You know, sometimes when you get up 14 nothing, maybe you take your foot off the gas a little bit. And um, it, it, it really is just, just a mental game. And it's a game of momentum as well. And Fitchburg has some momentum there early. Greater Lowell is able to fight back a little bit. But Fitchburg, you know, in the second half there, they were able to hold on play tough and get a good win here. And with that victory in Fitchburg now will finish week number three with a four and two record. Greater Lowell will fall to two and three. Greater Lowell will play another game tonight against Collegiate Charter School of Lowell. Fitchburg is done for the night, but they'll be back in action next week. They'll be going down to Doyle Field. They'll take on Ayer Shirley and they'll take on Veritas Prep. And speaking of Ayer Shirley, we'll be seeing them next against the Lemonster Blue Devils. That'll be an interesting what? contest. Yeah, how are you? Ayer Shirley just played Lemonster 2 early on, and based on what Chris Woods was saying, sounded like there were a lot of interceptions in that game. We'll get ourselves ready for game number three of our triple header. It'll be the Lemonster Blue Devils and the Ayer Shirley Panthers coming up next right here on FATV.